Blessings. I'm gospel recording artist appointed. Please stay tuned for Let's Talk to the Lord gospel radio talk show created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Trying to do what's right, but end up. I am your gospel 
Radio Apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for Season 5 of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. And Kingdom, our guest for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is author, magazine owner, radio station owner, and biblical teacher. Dr. Nia Jean. Dr. Nia's mission is to engage the millennials with uncommon practices in ministry, practices that actually appeal to them. Dr. Nia, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor and a privilege, and uh, I'm just glad to be a part of it. Thank you again, Apostle Ross. Amen. And before we begin our discussion, please share with the kingdom your story of repentance when you began your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow, that's a story all in itself. I actually got saved initially uh, at the age of 19 while I was pregnant uh, with my first son, newly married. And um, I kept getting invited um, to church by my coworker. I was in the United States Navy, and one of my uh, yeah. sailors kept inviting me to church, her and another gentleman, and they kept talking about all the wonderful things that our Lord and Savior could do, how they were moving in the miraculous and how they were just doing things under the power of the Holy Ghost. And I was like, yeah, okay, it sounds a little spooky, sounds a little weird to me, <laughs> and so um, Easter is upon us, and you know about the people, the CMEs, I call them Christmas, Mother Day, and Easter Church Saints. And yes. so I said, because Easter is coming, I'm going to go ahead and go. And I went to church with two of my friends, and it was amazing because the service, we're just sitting there looking because it's an apostolic ministry, Pentecostal ministry. They are shouting, running, speaking in tongues the whole nine, right? And me and my friends are sitting there looking like, what did we just encounter? Well, the service goes on, and at the end of service, my two friends go up to the altar to give their life to Christ and to join the church. Now, mind you, this is the first time that we've ever been there. And I'm still sitting back like, wait, what just happened? And uh, the pastor calls to me, and he says, daughter, why don't you come up front? Your friends have joined, and I'm like, really, this is not what I want to do, but I'm just not going to be embarrassed, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to walk up here. And I walked up there, and the pastor began to speak to me, and he laid hands on me. And all I remember is hearing somebody shouting and screaming, and it was me. I gave my life to Christ that day, and my life changed immediately. Now, I was a babe in Christ, so I did a lot of things wrong, and I was overzealous, and I put a lot of people, condemned them, sent them to hell, the whole nine, because I had no teaching and no knowledge about walking uh, in the auspices of God. And so I got saved, but I backslid many, many times. We transferred from there, transferred somewhere else. I still went on and uh, God, I I began to be used as an armor bearer, but still no real relationship with God. I was called to be a minister, but still no relationship for real, for real with God. And so I backslid, and I ended up having an affair. Uh, My husband was deployed quite a bit, and I ended up having an affair. And in the midst of that, we separated. And I'm at my home getting ready to go and hang out and do what I do, and God begins talking to me for real. I have an encounter that day in front of my mirror in my home alone, and God is calling my name. And I look out of my bedroom door the first time, and I think, well, who's in this apartment with me? Because my sons are with their dad. And I look out, and I don't see anybody. I'm like, hello. I go back to the mirror, finish getting myself together, and he calls my name again. And I walk out this time, out into the hallway, down the hall, looking around in the kitchen and dining area. There's nobody there. So I go back to my mirror, and then I realize that it's the Lord. And the first thing that I say to him is that they told me that you don't talk to people like me. They told me that you don't talk to people in the place and in the condition and the shape that I'm in right now. And God just began to talk to me about being a deliverer, being a new era preacher, and how I was going to bring people into the kingdom that were like me. But I didn't even know who I was. 
And that very moment, he began to speak to me, and he began to tell me who I was and show me, and it changed my life dramatically. When After I had that encounter and I went to church, I no longer cared what people thought. I no longer had to be suited and booted like everybody else was because I then understood under the anointing of God and him speaking to me that the anointing wasn't in what I wore. The anointing wasn't in the laws and the rules and all the things that man was saying. It truly was in him. You know, and so after my encounter, my life changed. Now, I don't I want to tell you and the listening audience that I didn't come out of sin immediately. I was still doing what I was doing, but God was wooing me every opportunity that he got to come back to him. And I eventually ended up um, giving my life back to Christ, rededicating myself and going on to preach the gospel. Now, I'm not going to say that it's been easy and I've been all of that in a bag of chips all the way because I have not. And that's one of the things that I emphasize and it makes me me apostle, that I'm very transparent. Yeah. And I'm transparent to the point of wanting others to know that no matter what you've done outside of Christ and in Christ, he can still use you. He still loves you. Oh, my God. He's so sovereign. And he pulls on you in order that you can, un- oh, Raman Shaya, in order that you can understand who he is and what he represents. And so after that encounter, I just, I've been going. I've been going. Even in the midst of making mistakes, I've still been going and running uh, for the Lord. And I'm so grateful for that. And that's my start and where I began. Hey, man. So, who is Nia G now in the kingdom of God and in the body of Christ? Oh, wow. First and foremost, I am a servant uh, to God and to God's people. Yeah. I love God so much, and I love God's people. And despite the title, because I'm not one that likes to even go by the title, the only reason that I'm going by it now is because my, my father, my apostle, got on me about who I was and allowing and letting other people know who I was. And so uh, I am an apostle. I'm a prophetic in- apostle because I, I walk in the office of a prophet. Uh, mm-hmm. But I am an apostle. I'm a planner and a pioneer. I don't currently have my own ministry um, that is a brick and mortar. I do minister online and I do uh, have mentorships and all other kinds of things that I do. Uh, I am going to be starting back my Sunday services online uh, until God tells me something different or, or has me to do something different. I'm also one mm-hmm. that wants to uh, pull in those that don't necessarily look like the traditional people, the downtrodden, yeah. the castaways, uh, the ones that are talked about, the ones that people seem to think are unusable is who God has called me to be. You know why, Apostle? Because that was me. That's who I was. Amen. So how, Dr. Nia, did your journey begin that brought you to who you are today? Wow. In 1994, getting saved. Uh, 1998, going back, rededicating my life and living for God. By the time 2003 uh, came along, I had backslidden and got into all kind of stuff. 2000. Seven, I end up uh, five through seven going back to, let me go back. In 2003, I, no, 2005, I got licensed as a minister. Even though I was yeah. called, I still wasn't moving in it because I just a whole nother story dealing with leaders, and I'm going to save that for another time. And yeah. I end up moving and going to another church, and immediately as I open my mouth, the pastor hears the anointing that's on my life and tells me what he'd like to do, he and his wife, and how they would like to help me in ministry. Um, I had to go through a lot of things uh, from 2007 um, to 2009, I went to uh, a church here, a mega ministry in Atlanta, Georgia, where I served and worked uh, as an intercessor, worked as a minister, uh, okay. worked as whatever they, they needed me to work as. 2009 to 11, I moved. Again, because I worked for the government as a counselor, so I transferred every so many years. And so 2009 through 11, I go to help my friends in their ministry. I'm sorry, 2009 to 11, God told me to go back to where I left because I left the wrong way. And he wanted me to leave with honor and with dignity. So he sends me back to a familiar place. But I go back this time as a prophet uh, of the Lord, and, and I'm matured, and I'm all the things that I were not when I left that ministry. 2000. 
uh, I lead the ministry again the right way with the blessing of the bishop. 2011 to 13, I go to another place and I'm helping some friends start their ministry. I'm, I become the house prophet and again lead intercessor and, and all those different things. Then 2013, um, I 14, 13, 14. 15, I open up my own ministry uh, in South Florida. I'm sitting under another mega pastor as my covering, and God has just been doing some amazing things. You know, then 2016, I'm helping another apostle as well. 2017, I'm back in my own ministry. I'm now married to an apostle, and mm-hmm. we go on in ministry, and um, I end up getting divorced, and God has just shown me because throughout this, after the divorce, I was lost. I didn't understand why I kept going through these things. I didn't understand why I kept having these issues. And at Mm -hmm. that point, God reminded me of what he told me back in 2006, 2005, what he called me to do. And so uh, I've just walked all of that out. To be who I am now is amazing, even when I look at it, because I didn't think I would ever be here. I didn't think that God would really even have a desire to use me with where what I was doing and what I had been doing. But I, I'm so glad that he did. And he now uses my life. And I'm a martyr um, for God and for those that want to come into God and get to know him, knowing that they have all this other stuff that they dealt with. And I'm just, I'm, I love God so much. And I'm so amazed every time I tell my story because it captivates the people and it captures somebody that they want to come into the body of Christ because they understand who God is after that and that he can still love them, use them, and do uh, what he has a desire to do inside of them. Amen. Dr. Nia G., please introduce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Our topic for today is matters of the heart. I want to deal with something that we continue to, uh, it's an issue in the body of Christ. And I want to deal with that. And I'm going to be coming from Jeremiah 17 and 9. I'm going to read out of the Message Bible. Guys, the Message Bible is my favorite interpretation of the Word of God. Why? Because it sounds like me. It talks plain. It talks to you. It talks simple. You cannot misconstrue what it's saying when you read it. So if you have an opportunity uh, to pick up a Message Bible or get an app that has the Message Bible on it, I would encourage you to do so. And again, we're talking about matters of the heart, and I'm coming from Jeremiah 17 and 9, and the Scripture reads at verse 9. The heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful, a puzzle that no man can figure out. Now, I also want to read this to you for those in your hearing uh, that love the King James Version. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who understands the matters of the heart? Who knows what's going on with the heart? It's amazing that we think that because we have a heart to live for God or because we have a desire to live for God that everything's going to pan out and every Everything's going to be okay, and everything's going to work in our favor and always work in our ways. But I want to tell you on today that if you don't have your heart right, if your heart is not in the right posture, if you have not given that solely to God, then you are mistaken about what you can do and who you are and what you will do in the body of Christ because it clearly tells us that there's something wrong with the heart. If we don't have it fixed or regulated by God, then we are capable of doing anything. Hallelujah. It says the heart is dark. It's hopeless. And it's deceitful. My God, that sounds like everything that we are without Christ. I don't understand why the people of God seem to think that if their heart's not right, that they are not capable or will not continue to be these things when the word of God says it. But the funny part about it is he is talking to us of those that are saints and those that are in the body of Christ, part of the church on today, telling us, listen, if your heart ain't been fixed, if it ain't been regulated, if it hasn't been solely given out and sold out to God, you will still fall into this category. You still have the capability and the propensity of doing something deceitful, of doing something wicked. Why? Because we have that in our hearts. If if your heart is not right, 
if you have not solely and totally given yourself over and let God have total control of who you are, what you are, and what's on the inside of you. You know, we like to have that form of godliness, and we deny all the power. It says the power thereof, but that's all the power that we could possibly receive from Christ. We deny that. Why? Because we don't get the inside issues fixed with us. We don't yeah. get the things on the inside fixed. We like to look good. We like yes, to Lord. smell good. We like for people to, you know, look at us and think that we're all together lovely. But that heart, oh, my God, that heart yes, is Lord. a bad thing. That heart, when that heart ain't solely given unto God, you will say, oh, my God, you will cut your brother. Do you understand yes. what I'm saying? You will cut him down. You will tear him up. You will backbite. You will tail bear. You will lie. You will do everything because the Teacher. heart is evil. It's evil. But Teacher. you've got to give it over to God. And when you solely give him control of your heart, he is in control. Listen, the scripture says that God holds the king's heart in his hand, and he can turn it whether, ever, so, which way he chooses, right? That same thing yeah. holds true for us. God, when he has your heart, he can change it. He can direct you. He can lead you. He can guide you because he has the ability to, to structure and change you according to what his desire is, according to what his will is. But we've gotten so accustomed, Apostle, to yeah. doing things our way, and we've gotten so accustomed to just flying by the cup and off the seat of our pants that we have not taken time to have surgery. Yes. That surgery on the inside of us is not a physical or not a natural thing. It's not a literally a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing yes. that we allow God to take control and take hold of what's on the inside of us. Our heart and our mind have got to line up together in order for God's will to be fulfilled in our yes. lives and not just in our lives, in the lives of other people and in the lives of those that we lead and those that we talk to and those that see us. They've got to line up together because if the heart and the mind don't work in tandem, you're still capable of doing something out of the will and out of the way of yes, what Lord. God would have for you to go. It's got to be a joint effort between yes, the Lord. two because if the heart is saying it has a desire for something that's not God's will, you're going to gravitate to that. If the mind tells you to go ahead and focus on this and move here and do that, because we know and understand that the mind, the battlefield of the mind is the devil's playground. The battle yeah. that we have in our mind is the devil's playground. And so that heart that the Bible calls deceitful and wicked has got to be fixed on Jesus. We've got to allow him to do the surgery that's on the inside of us by giving it us his heart, by giving us his mind, by yes, giving Lord. us his will. We've got to give up everything that we want and everything that we desire in order that God can take control of us. Yes, and oftentimes Jesus. we don't want to do that. Oftentimes we want to be in control and we want to do what it is that we want to do and just bring God along with us so we can ask him a question every now and again. I yes. want to appeal to the people on today and say that if you don't have clean hands and if you don't have a pure heart, you're in trouble because the heart can get you into some situations and some issues, and it deals with the emotional part of you. The heart will have you do some, some behavioral things that are sometimes out of your character because you're going based off the heart issues. You're going based off the emotional issues. You're going based off triggers from your past. You're going based off of everything other than God yeah. and the direction that he's called us to. So I want to say and solicit to the people on today that may be listening via the airways that get your heart right. Get your heart fixed. Yes, get Lord. your heart regulated. Get no, your Lord. heart Stabilize. Get your Ramababa Shoya. You've got to be in a posture where you will allow God to go on the inside of you and fix that very thing that you're holding on to, that very thing that has been causing you issues your entire life. I want to say to you today, give it to Jesus. I want to say to you today that He is the author and the finisher of your faith. I want to say to you that you got to give everything over to Him in order that He can change the dynamic of what it says about your heart and what what it says that we carry and what it says that we'll do. God is in control of everything. He is the one that can regulate yes, everything in us. 
Hallelujah. The matters of the heart, we tend to just deal with things uh, by flying, as I said, by the seat of our pants or off the cuff or dealing with things that look good to us when they're not necessarily good for us, Apostle. They're not yeah. necessarily good for us, and we tend to constantly run to those things because it's something that we have not dealt with on the inside of us. It's, it's dealing with our emotions and with our will also. I'm telling you, the body of Christ is in a bad spot right now because we're evil, because we're mean, because we're snakes, because we don't want to do what it is that God has told us to do. Why? Because we feel like it'll make us look weak. We feel like yeah. it'll make us look, you know, like we don't have a backbone or we don't have any umph to us or no girl, or like we're punks. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Kingdom, I want to for my segment, deal with a important question. What exactly are matters of the heart? Kingdom, the heart itself is one of the most vital areas and organs in our body. It pumps our blood and it circulates oxygen and it gives nutrients to our tissues and is a part of the system that removes carbon dioxide and other waste from our bodies. However, yeah. the matters of our heart come from a spiritual place and has physical substance because it occupies space in our mind. These personal matters and concerns are not only a interest, but it is significant because it occupies a major part of us and affects Absolutely. the way we think, act, and feel. It is our very core. The Word yes. of God describes the heart as our inner man, meaning our spirit, soul, mind, emotions, and passions. Your Absolutely. heart is the real you. It's where your belief affects your behavior. The yes. Bible says to guard our heart. The heart mm -hmm. is the console center of your life. This is why I constantly cannot reiterate enough that we must invite Christ Jesus and God's Holy Spirit and the Word of God to our core. They are essential nutrients. Satan and sin clogs our arteries. The arteries are the vessels that deliver oxygen, rich blood from our heart to the tissues of our body. The tissues yes is a group of cells that have similar structure and they function together as a unit. And our body cells are the basic building blocks of all living things. Now, kingdom, Satan, and sin stains our heart, our blood, our oxygen, tissue cells, and their functions. Jesus' mm -hmm. blood purifies every area and functions develop our character and our yes. fruit. When we repent and change from sin to relationship with God through Christ Jesus, from their divine supernatural power, they purify, sanctify, regenerate, recalibrate, change and override the corrosion and the effects of that sin, releasing Amen. a new me, a new you. Our spirit, man, soul, mind, emotions, and passions now flow from the spirit, mind, emotions, and passions of God. Yeah. However, if you reject, rebel, or disobey God, our relationship through Jesus Christ, sin will contaminate your control center and their proper functions and eventually can kill you. Not only physically, but eternally. That's why it's imperative that we strive to resist the temptation of sin and press toward God until you get to God by Christ Jesus' kingdom. I want to read from Apostle Luke, the 6th chapter, and the 46th through the 45th verses, where it declares, verse 42, Or how can you say to your brother, brother, 
Allow Come me on. to take out the speck that is in your eye when you yourself do not see the beam that is in your own eye. You actor, meaning pretender, hypocrite, first take the beam out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. Verse 43, for there is no good healthy tree that bears decayed worthless stale fruit, nor on the other hand does a decayed worthless sickly tree bear good fruit. Verse 44, for each tree is known and identified by its own fruit. For figs, kingdom figs, denote our spiritual condition. Figs are not gathered from the thorn bushes, nor is a cluster of grapes picked from a bramble bush. Kingdom bramble bush here denotes strongholds in our lives. Verse 45, the upright meaning honorable, intrinsically good, a man out of the good treasure stored in his heart produces what is upright, honorable, and intrinsically good, and the evil man out of the evil storehouse brings forth that which is depraved, wicked, and intrinsically evil, for out of the abundance overflow of the heart his mouth yes. speaks. Kingdom, yes. the good fruit comes from and is Christ. Matthew 12 and 35 declares, verse 35, a good man brings good things out of his good store of treasure. Kingdom, anything outside of Christ is evil store and evil treasure. Kingdom, please understand our Lord is speaking in immediate connection with judgment given to him, Jesus, by the Pharisees and Sanhedrin. Understand we need God to help us, Jesus, to crush and overcome and cast out the demonic agents and arrows of Satan and sin that prevents Absolutely. us from bringing forth that good fruit, that good treasure stored. We need the wise counsel of our Lord so we don't bring forth harsh or hasty judgments, but kindness, gentleness, and compassion. Dr. Nia and listening audience, I can't say it enough, no matter what what your matters and difficulties have been or are, I don't know the root and I don't have to know its origin, but what I do know is that you are not alone. God loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. I am not where you are, but God, our Lord, are where you are, right where you are, so from your lips, your heart, and mind, talk to the Lord. Tell him all about your trouble and allow his healing and transformation to take place in your life. Tell him that you want him as your Lord. Tell him you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and he was raised from the dead on the third day. And ask him to live in your heart and mind and allow him to guide your decisions. Dr. Yeah. Nia G, please give us the final words on our topic of discussion, matters of the heart. Yes, amen. Listen, I just want to simply encourage the people of God on today that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you may be facing, your heart has to be in line with God. If you have clean hands and a pure heart, God will hear you. He will listen. He will move. We cannot be stuck in a place where our heart is not the primary or one of the primary focuses that we have to change uh, about ourselves. So please, by any means necessary, when it comes to the things of God, I want each of you to know that we still cannot be in a place where we are judgmental where we are hypocritical, where we are uh, mean and nasty. Yeah. But, in fact, we have to put on the love of Christ. Yeah. And that only happens when you have a heart transplant. Amen. Amen. Dr. Nia G, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. Absolutely. I am Dr. Nia, just Nia G, uh, of the Just Nia Morning Show, Until Chronicles Radio Show, Until Chronicles Magazine. Uh, I am a owner of Transparent Radio 
Queendom Air Radio, and I am also a TV network owner or co-owner along with my sister of WEKBN Network, an Amazon best-selling author. I have several books that are out. I have a makeup line that I am co-founder on with my sister and a lash line. And I just recently uh, secured a contract to for some of my designs, clothing designs to be sold in major department stores. So that's me in a nutshell. Amen. And how may the kingdom support your ministries and all that you do for the kingdom of God? Absolutely. On Wednesdays, each week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do Candid Conversations. That is a show dealing with real issues and dealing with encouragement and dealing with pushing uh, the men and women of God to the next level. Uh, You can sow into that ministry, sow into myself by uh, giving at Cash App, I am just Nia. Or you can just simply follow me. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Uh, Follow me just so you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and maybe one day it's you that may need encouraging or uplifting, and I would love to be that person for you and to pray with you and to stand in agreement with you for the things of God. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom, let's talk to the Lord can be heard on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, YouTube. You can download episodes from speaker.com. You can hear us every Monday on Elation Radio and at PositivePower21.org. Just go to that website and click on Menu, click on Media Room, and let's talk to the Lord for every episode episode. Every Saturday, we're on Sensational Sounds Radio at 11 a.m. Central Time. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot international. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please download our app on the Google App Store on your cell phone under the name Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. On Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International, we have 24-7 music, talk radio, interviews, news, and so much more. Kingdom, you can now ask Alexa to begin Let's Talk Radio International. My latest EP, Remember Now, Thy Creator, is available on all digital stores, and we also have more new music. Lord, give me another chance, led by Sean Skills and featuring Tamara Lloyd, is available on all digital stores, so please head on over to Amazon and pick you up a copy. So on. Until next time, may God bless you and may God keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you.